Hi there everyone, a few days ago I posted this video of a sort of tentacly bioluminescence plane in Touch Designer and this tutorial is going to recreate this. The tutorial is actually going to be split into two parts. The first part is just going to show you how to create the tentacle field and then in a subsequent tutorial I'm going to show you how to create these sort of little iridescent trails. I'm also going to show you how to make this type of um, kind of feedback attractor system so the tentacles are actually sort of feeding back and the tentacles are interfacing with objects in their environment here. Moving around we also have this ability to have a feedback loop where we kind of have color and uh, things some images that are fed through to manipulate them. So the first part of the tutorial which we're going to look at today is really just going to be making these types of tentacles and then stay tuned for future tutorial part two of this where we'll look at how to add in these sort of additional effects. This if we're viewing it like this is basically a method that we can use to sort of distort a picture as well so if I just put this in start that feedback loop we're manipulating that picture by these tentacle threads so you could have something going in um, that you manipulate and use this as a sort of post processing technique for images anyway I'm going to start from scratch and build the first part of the system I'm going to start off the network with a line pop I'm going to go into points and I'm going to turn off the values for the X and Y and I'm just going to work with Z putting it up to 3. Let's home that. I'm going to plug this into a copy and on the bottom inlet of the copy I'll plug in this grid. Okay, there we go, that's looking good. I'm going to make this grid a lot bigger so the proportions between the line and the grid make a lot more sense. Now we have this grid of lines that we can manipulate and work with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a noise. Let's view like this and this noise is essentially going to be our displacement that's going to make that sort of waviness to our lines. And this is like a super simple effect to, to add in. I'm going to turn the period up to 3 and I'm going to animate with abs times dot seconds times 0 0.1. So now we can see that these little fronds are moving. In addition to that, I want to create a method of actually sort of adding in the movement as we progress. Like right now, it's manipulating everything. And what I want to do is I want to have the bottom relatively static in its original place. And as we move up the frond, I want it to get more and more distorted. So what I'm going to do here is after the line, I'm going to insert a pattern pop. And I'm going to set these to zero. I just want my ramp and then I'll call it mix. This will be my output attribute. I'll do a math mix here. Or oh, sorry, I'll do it my I'll do a math mix after the noise and I'll plug in the copy. The ramp is basically going to let us maneuver from zero, which is going to be the original unprocessed, to one, which will be the noise affected version of this. So in my math mix, I'm going to go to one of my favorite operations, which is mix ABC. For scope A, I'm going to say in one P. So in one P is going to be my unaffected copy position. Then I'm going to say P for my scope B, and then I'm going to say mix for my final element. And result scope is going to be P. So now we can see that the bottom 
of this is static and the top is very wavy or quite wavy. What we can do here is see as we increase the noise the bottom still stays in its same position while the top elements are moving further and further away. So this is a really nice effect. We could also play around with what position this starts from in terms of the ramp in the pattern by changing where we actually move from. So I could say 0.5 to 1 or even like minus 1 to 1 to change out what we actually are doing here. I could even turn down this top value to sort of smooth it out a little bit. So you do have some control there. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to drag that into a copy. And before I attach this grid of lines, I'm going to turn down the uniform scale to 0 0.15. Then I'll plug in the copy. And this is giving us a sort of stacked layer of these circles, which is great. This is sort of the basis of that tentacle. Before I add a skin to sort of mesh this together, what I really want is the tentacles to taper as they grow. So start off at their widest point and taper down to a sort of tip. And what I'm going to do for this is under template, under template scale, I'm going to use my mix attribute. So we can see here that that ramp going from 0 to 1 is affecting that scale. In this instance, it's going in the opposite direction. So I actually want the smallest end to be up here and the largest end to be down there. What I can do is just insert a math. I can select the attribute mix. And right now we have our map from low to high 0 to 1. We can just reverse this and say 1 to 0. So now we have our tentacles. If you want to make this more pronounced, you could up your divisions. So the more divisions we have, the more points along our tentacles we will have. So if you have something like 200, it's going to be a very dense sort of meshed tentacle and look really cool even if you don't skin it together. I'm going to stick at 20. I'm going to plug it into a skin. And I'll plug this into a normal so that those normals will be calculated on that sort of tentacle grid. We do have this sort of unwanted artifact where everything is sort of connected with these extra lines connecting to the side. So to remove that, what we're going to do is turn on this template rotate to vector. And by default, the rotate to vector attribute will be set to N. Let's flip that to P. So now we have this sort of nice tentacle grid. You could also switch this to noise if you wanted to which also kind of works. So that's up to you, or you could add in your own sort of attributes for this. At this point, we've been able to create something that has a fairly organic feel, even with just a few operators. And this is something that is super powerful about pops. A few more things to make this feel a bit more organic. We can add in after the grid, a random attribute which is going to allow us to define how long each of these lines are. I'm going to switch this to set and I'll call this len, L-E-N. And I want my value to be like 0.25 or 0.3 to 1. Under this first copy, which is what's copying those lines, I'm going to go to template. I'll switch to template scale and turn on len. So now we can see that these different tentacles have different lengths, which makes this feel a bit more sort of organic as a, as a system. We can also up how many we have in the grid. So let's do 50 by 50 and see how that works. Okay, that's looking great. The next step is to plug this into a geo so we can start to visualize it 
a little bit easier. Bring up the geometry viewer. Place it somewhere that feels right. Okay, that's good. We might notice that my frame rate has taken a bit of a hit. So let's turn down the divisions on those circles. Even something like five is going to give us an output, but the higher we can go is going to be better. So let's say about 10 divisions on those circles. And we can also turn down the divisions for these line segments. The more divisions, the smoother it's going to be. Let's say 18. This is sort of an artifact, this sort of black bar at the end, but I quite like that. So I'm going to keep that for now. I'm not going to fix it. And this is great. My frame rate is right up again. At this point, I want to color every tentacle uniquely. What I'm going to do is add in a, another random under combine operation. I'll change it to set attribute scope I'll call color with a capital C. I'm going to expand this output attribute scope by clicking on these two arrows. Override automatic attribute set to on. Then I'm going to set the attribute type to color. We should see that we have a color field now. We can change it slightly in terms of the high and low boundaries or the seed, but that's randomly generated. And now back to that copy and I'm going to go to the template attributes. So these are attributes that are kind of by default often stored within a pop like color and position and texture are commonly ones that are stored within a pop. I'm going to turn on use template point attributes and under names I'll select color. So now each of these should be colored uniquely which is super nice. What we can also do is add in something that's going to read from a top. So instead of having this random generated noise here, we can actually have an image. It could be noise or it could be an actual image like I showed you earlier. So let's take this noise two. I'm going to switch it to color, turn up the period to four, and I'm going to bring this in. I'll start out by doing pop two or top two. I'm now going to add in an attribute combine, which will allow me to plug in the color values from this noise. In attribute combine, I'll bring up the parameters. In attributes, I'll select color. What we're going to see is that the color is not quite mapping. And this is because the scale of my noise is slightly different to the scale of my grid. So let's rectify that. My resolution will be grid rows and grid cols and now it should align nicely. What you could also do for example in your patch here is instead of using that length that we've created you could add in a way of controlling this via color. Let's go into that attribute combine. I'll make a math mix I'm going to just select A. I'll get my color, but I just want the X. And I'm going to call it CLEN. So now under copy, let's take CLEN. And so I'm going to be controlling the height of these tentacles based on my noise. If I go ahead and do a little animation, so abs time dot seconds times 0.25 we're going to see that the tentacles are growing which in its own way is like a super nice effect you could also apply this to different things so let's try just a point generator a sphere with like a hundred values and then you change this rotation in this first copy to rotate to vector then transform so then it should be sort of coming from around the shape 
let's turn up that radius let's home so this would allow you to have um, a bunch of tentacles coming out of something uh, maybe a sphere actually would be better where everything's a bit more uniformly placed so then you have this sort of tentacle ball that you can work with you can turn up the frequency of that or turn it down and you get something that is like super interesting and sort of warpy. This is where I'm going to leave you with this tutorial for now and we will revisit this with a part two where we will look at how to do tentacle trails and adding attractors to those tentacles. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two.